so portals are an awesome thing to do. And I have previously done one with Shader Graph. And it went very well actually. But I never did one with VFX Graph. So that's exactly what we are going to see today. And we are in fact going to combine both tutorials at the end. And as you can see I made a few portals already. Some are more complex than others, but this is the one I'm going to show you how to create. The other portals are exclusively available on my Patreon page and I left a link in the description in case you are interested to have access. So with that being said, let's see how we can do this. So first things first, let's not forget to go to Package Manager and down here install VisualFX Graph and Shader Graph as well. Once that is done, you can go ahead and with right click in Create you can go to Visual Effects and then create a Visual Effect Graph. I'm gonna drag and drop this to the scene and push this a little bit up so it's centered with my portal. Now we can press in Edit this button and VFX Graph opens up and I'm gonna duck it right here to the right. Ok, so the first thing we are going to create some stretched particles. And for that we don't need this set velocity random. What we actually want is the particles to start in a circle position. And in here we can control the radius so it fits the portal. In my case it's going to be 0 0.85. What we can also do is change the main texture down here. And we can search for the default particle that comes with Unity already. We can also change the blend mode to additive in case you don't want this dark around the particles. Now for the particles to be stretched we need to align them to the velocity with this model. But at this moment there is no velocity, right? So we don't see any particle. So to create the tunnel effect with the stretched particles we want to tell the particles to conform to a sphere, to take the shape of a sphere. As you can see this sphere also has a radius, which is set to 1, but we want to set it to a very low value, like 0 0.05. Now what's happening at the moment is that the attraction speed is too high, we want to decrease it to 1. Ok, that's better. Down here what we also want to change is the set size over lifetime. We want this curve. And they are a little bit too big. So let's control that with the set size. But we want to add some randomness and we can do that up here. Set the random to uniform. I'm gonna set some very low values. But as you can see that doesn't make any difference at all. And that's because the set size over lifetime it's set to overwrite. So it's going to overwrite any previous value related to the size. We want instead to multiply the previous value. Just like this, as you can see, we have some very tiny particles. Now, for the stretched part, we want to go ahead and set scale. And we want this to be random as well. And we want to stretch the particle only in the Y. As you can see, if I increase the Y value, we start seeing some stretched particles, which is great. And the X is going to make them thin or thicker. So this value seems OK for now. But once you start moving around, you will notice that the particles are working in a 2D space only. And we want to add depth to this. The way we do it is by setting the conform to sphere center to be something like minus 2 in the Z. And that's it, as you can see the particles now acquire a cone shape. Which is great, we only need now to increase the rate. But first the capacity to a good value. And then we can increase the rate. 750 seems ok. Alright, so that's starting to look like something. Now to add color to this, as you can see we already have the set color over lifetime, but that only handles the fade in and the fade out. So let's use a set color, but as you can see if we change the color, nothing really happens. That's because the set color over lifetime, once again, it's set to overwrite. And we don't want that, we want to multiply any previously given value of the color. We can also create a new parameter, call it particles color or color01, and choose any color. I'm gonna start with the green for this tutorial. 
and then we can connect it down here. And then we can create a group selection, select everything and with right click. And these are the particles stretched, right? Now, for the next part, you can either use Google and search for a circle, or you can go to Photoshop or to GIMP or to Krita, create a new file, and with the ellipse tool, hold Shift and Alt to create a proportional circle, increase a little bit the stroke, which you have to make sure it's white, align this to the center, and finally, if you double click on the ellipse, you can choose an outer glow. You can play with these values as you wish. What really matters then is that you save this Photoshop file directly to Unity, to your project, without the black background. You can hide it. And back to Unity now, we can go ahead and create a simple particle system, this one. Which is not going to use a spawn rate, because we want to only spawn this particle one time. So let's instead use a single burst, with count set to 1 and delay to 0. And we don't need velocity, we don't want this to move. Lifetime is not going to be random, it's going to be 0 0.9. And down here, the main text, we can select the circle that we have created. Change the blend mode to additive. And for now, let's turn off set size of a lifetime. And let's create a set size module with a value of 2. Now, what matters is that we set the color of a lifetime to be like this. So it basically starts glowing stronger and stronger. And then if you want, you can create another color, color 02. And we need to set color. We need to set color first. We can also remove the set size of lifetime. And we also need to change the color of lifetime so it's in multiply mode. Just like this. I'm going to shoot the greenish color. And it's starting to look like something. We just need to make a few more adjustments. You can also group this, by the way. Which is useful because now you can copy and paste this particle system. And rename it to beam flash. This is going to be a flash, a quick flash. And it's going to have a delay of one second. Basically, we will see the circle glowing, and then we will see this bright light really quick as soon as the circle stops glowing. Since it's a flash, we want a lifetime of 0 0.2. And we can also assign the default particle. The size is going to be ridiculous, something like 10. And the color of lifetime, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be really bright in the beginning, and then it will fade out. What we can also do is add a set size of a lifetime, which is going to be set to multiply, don't forget that. And then we want to use a curve similar to this one, which goes from 1 to 0. Right. So, if I disable and enable this VFX graph, this is what we got. Right, so the circle works as an anticipation, and then we have this flash of light really quick which means something like the portal is open. Now, let's improve this by copying the particle stretch it, copy and paste them. I'm going to push it up here and then also copy and paste the constant burst from the beam flash to the new particle stretch it. Erase the spawn rate and we can set the count of the single burst to something like 750. That should be enough. These stretched particles are going to leave less so let's decrease the lifetime, something like this. And down here, the conform to sphere, the radius, it's going to be much bigger than the circle, something like 4. So the particles goes outwards. Then we want to set a random value for the traction speed, something between 1 and 5. So the particles are scattered all around. Just like this. Okay, great impact. That's looking nice. Now let's add a shock wave, and for that we can copy the the circle warm up particle system. Let's drag it up here. And for the shock wave, if you want, you can create another circle with the same method we used previously. I created this circle. 
with a much bigger size, like 10, or simply drag it while holding control, it will duplicate it. But this curve should be the opposite. Something like this for the shockwave to expand. Finally, we just need to switch the color of lifetime, it should be the opposite. Just like this. Maybe actually we don't want the shockwave to start all the way from zero. So let's push this first kill a bit up. That looks nicer. The shockwave is going to leave less, like 0 0.6. And we also want to add a delay of one second. And this is what we got so far. A good looking impact with a nice shockwave. Now let's add a breathing circle all around of our portal. And it's very simple, we only need to copy and paste the circle warm up. We don't want a single burst, we want a constant rate of only one. And the lifetime it's going to be two seconds. Basically a breathing circle. But as you can see if we rotate this, the circle follows the camera, it faces the camera. Luckily we only need to change the orient mode to advance it and make sure the axis Z it's one in the Z and the axis Y it's one in the Y, just like this. And as you can see now it faces correctly the portal. Just gonna push this a little bit back, okay, looking good. We also need to set the circle warm up, the orient mode to advance it with the same values. Now let's work a little bit the anticipation and we can reuse the circle warm up, copy and paste it. And we can also copy the single burst with Ctrl C and Ctrl V three times just like this. One delay at 0 0.3 seconds and the other 0 0.6 seconds. The lifetime of each circle is going to be 0 0.4. And then we can add the size of our lifetime and change the composition to multiply. And now if we use one of these curves, we only need to adjust it like this. And then push this scale a bit back. And add another one. And this will add a different motion to the circles, as you can see. You can play a lot with this and make different motions. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it as it is. Now, what if we wanted the particle stretched in the center to only start appearing once the portal is open? Well, we can delay the particle stretched. And the way we do it is by using a total time, all the time that it has passed, and compare this to a certain value. That value will be the delay. We just need to set the condition to greater or equal. Basically, once it has passed the one second, we want to use a branch. And if it's true, we want to set the spawn rate to 750. And that's it, we have delayed the particle stretch. And I think it looks better this way. It's a simple, nice touch. Looking great, we can improve the anticipation by copying the beam flash, move it down here, remove the delay, set it to zero, and the lifetime it's going to be 0 0.9, almost one second, which is how long our anticipation takes. And the set size can be 3.5. Then we only need to change the size over time, so it uses this curve. And the color of lifetime it's going to be the opposite. It gets brighter and brighter until it explodes. Right, and it adds a nice touch for the anticipation. Once the portal opens, it has a really nice impact. Now for one of the coolest tricks, how do we integrate shader graph in this VFX graph? Well, first we need to create a shader, more specifically a VFX shader graph. It must be a VFX shader graph. Once you create that shader, you will need to follow this tutorial that I made a while back about the portals and you need to recreate that shader inside this VFX graph shader and you will end up with something similar to this. 
And one of the most important parts is that you rename the reference of your properties. As you can see my reference, I'll share the same name as the properties. They only have an underscore in front. And you will understand in a moment why this is important. Once you have recreated the portal shader, we can go back to our portal VFX graph. We want to copy the circle breathing. We want to set the capacity to 1. And the lifetime can be as much as you want. Now the cool thing is that down here, in the output particle quad, we can feed a shader graph. And there's only one type of shader that functions here, which is the VFX graph shader that we have created. And as you can see, you have all the parameters here. And these parameters have the name of the reference. That's why it's important to rename the reference of the properties. For example, now you can assign the default particle to the main texture. And here we go, we are starting to see something very cool. You can play with these values with the scale. You can assign the color 0 to, for example. Maybe increase the dissolve as well. And the 12 strand. I mean, the possibilities with these are so huge. They are really awesome. And that's how you integrate shader graph in a VFX graph. So that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video, if you want to study this up close or use these portals in your game, all of this is available on my Patreon page, you will find plenty of effects there. And a big thank you goes to all my patrons, as usual, I'm able to keep on doing this thanks to you. And to finalize, a special shout out goes to the Super Mega Patrons, which are Adriano Bottega, Alejandro, Angel R. Dev, Show James, Corner Marble, Goblin Plague, Hero Syndrome The Game, Himeraya SPC, Invention Games, Josh McCormick, Ram and Yola, Ken Lee, Makozi, Marco Rossi, Nikolai Slodus, Psychotech Studios, Robin Boutreau, Steven Melton, TK, Xor, and Gary Kiegesarian. So that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed very much this video, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.